Okay, here we go. So this is the um, first lecture of what I think is the coolest chapter in, uh, yeah, yeah, I'd say it's the coolest chapter in the calculus book. Um, it's on 3D coordinates or, um, you know, vectors in 3D space. And so appropriately and coincidentally, the, uh, the background picture uh, for my you know, desktop over here is space. That wasn't intentional. It's also Carl Sagan's birthday this Wednesday. Um, so space, Carl Sagan, 3D coordinates, it all ties together. And uh, I hope that that means something to you. <laughs> Maybe it doesn't. Whatever. Okay, um, let's go going with this stuff. Um, full screen. Um, so, so far all we've done is um, talk about things in, uh, for the most part, 2D space. Right? And we could find um, any point in two dimensions uh, using these two coordinates, uh, one being x uh, and one being y, right? So we could find some spot here, and we could give it, we could count over on the x-axis, you know, number of units, and we could count up on the y-axis a number of units, and then wind up in the right spot. Um, at some point, we uh, moved on to a little more elegant way to describe how to get to this point, uh, and we called that uh, with polar coordinates, where we had another two dimensions, and it's not coincidental that, you know, to find the same place in X and Y, two dimensions, uh, we could also find the same place in R and theta, right? Still two dimensions, and this is theta here, that angle. All right, well, um, the real world, uh, the world in which we live, uh, is actually in uh, three dimensions, 3D dimensions. That's what 3D stands for, is three dimensions. Um, so, for instance, a 3D movie, right, things aren't just moving, you know, up and down, left and right on the screen. Things can come out of the screen at you, or at least um, it looks that way. Well, we've got a number of ways to define where things are um, in 3D space. Uh, I'm going to start, I'm going to go a little bit out of order, um, and so I'm going to start with one that's very related to polar coordinates, and that is um, cylindrical coordinates. Okay, so if I took this thing here and say I wanted to get to a certain, well, not too big, too big. Um, so this is called cylindrical coordinates. And if it's not obvious, it's called cylindrical coordinates because of the way you find something looks a lot like a cylinder. So we can start down here in the 2D plane, x, y, or r, theta, and we can find our point, um, you know, just like this. But what if um, we didn't want to be on the surface here, we wanted to be up higher. So we start with just our old definition of polar coordinates, which by now we're very familiar with these. Um, and we just add a third dimension. So we have r is our first dimension, 1. Theta is our second dimension, 2. And then z is our third dimension. So we can stay in the plane, add a z dimension, and go up to find things in cylindrical coordinates. Now some of you might say, well, that's still not the best way to get there. We take the hypotenuse this way, but wouldn't it be faster just to go you know, up here like this to get straight to our point? Well, sure it would be. And so we've got another coordinate system that works for that. And those are called... Spherical coordinates. And so that way we can get straight there, no right turns necessary, we can get right to where we want to go. And spherical coordinates look like this. Make that a little bigger. Um, yeah, I'm just going to blow a whole page on this, what the heck. Uh, so to find this same kind of similar point, P, um, our three dimensions um, become... I'll do this kind of the same way, um, R, right, which gets us out kind of the appropriate distance, um, and then theta, which gets us away from this axis, so that's our second dimension, and then to get the third dimension, we just go up, so this winds up being, this is actually kind of a bad drawing, this is actually R here, and then we have a third one, phi, Greek letter for you page, phi, um, to get out the right way. So we can get to any point in space 
straight on the hypotenuse without making any turns um, using spherical coordinates. Um, so as you might guess, things involving uh, satellites, um, some aircraft, you know, orbits, all that stuff like that works in spherical coordinates. But for our purposes, we're going to stick with what we're most familiar with, and we're going to uh, go into um, Cartesian, right? Who is Cartesian named after? Rene Descartes. So Cartesian um, coordinates, also called uh, rectangular coordinates. All right, so Cartesian or rectangular coordinates. Um, and that's the uh, old-fashioned system that we're used to looking at. And I'm going to draw this kind of in, uh, I'll draw it like this. We'll talk a little bit about why I draw it like this. There's one coordinate. There's another coordinate axis here. Now, traditionally, we call this X, and this is Y. And we can find our point in 2D space by giving an X and Y. But I'm going to add a third dimension out here. Okay, and so this is supposed to look like it's in 3D, and we're going to call this, as you might expect, Z. So X, Y, and Z. Now, it's fairly important that we do these correctly. They're oriented the right way. And so we say that these are right-handed coordinate systems. Um, X and Y are always kind of to, we, um, you know, to get to Y, you kind of go counterclockwise from X. So you start at X and you go counterclockwise, you get Y. Positive Y would never, for instance, be down here. Positive Y is always up this way. Well, to continue that, to get from Y to Z, we also have to go in the right-hand direction, which I'll try to demonstrate um, with this little picture here. So here we have um, some guy's hand, and it, uh, I'll stick that right there. So X, Y, and Z, if your thumb is X, your index finger is Y, and your middle finger is Z. So those who are taking physics, once you get into magnetism, you're going to get very used to this. Um, but even for the sake of calculus, X, Y, and Z go like this. Um, and this is called the uh, the right hand rule. That's this thing here. Uh, another way to visualize this, um, which will be um, a little more interesting, eh, no, no, just another way to look at it, is with this thing here. There's a kind of a, what I labeled, it's still a right hand rule, but I called it the right thumb rule in this case. Um, it's this one here. Right, so notice my X, Y, and Z are kind of all switched around, but the orientation is still the same. To go from X to Y, I'm still going counterclockwise. If I'm looking down at this plane, X to Y is still counterclockwise. Um, and then, you know, it, this, this matches here, and then Z kind of comes straight out from the X, Y plane, just like it did here. X, Y, Z comes straight out. X, Y, Z comes straight out. The other way to do this is if you curl your fingers in the direction as if you're going from X to Y, so that would be counterclockwise, your thumb points in the direction of the Z direction. So this is another version of the right hand rule. And so we can say that these are uh, right handed coordinate systems. And in my uh, in my experience, I've never really done anything that's not in a right-handed coordinate system. Um, I would guess maybe chemists, when they talk about stereoisomerism, if you'd taken a chemistry class, they might do stuff in right and left hands. Um, so they do mirror images of molecules often. But anyway, we're going to stick with the right-handed coordinate system. Um, some other names that you might see for this uh, rectangular space, or 3D space in general, is um, you might seen it, see it called 3-space. Sometimes it was written like this, like the symbol for uh, real numbers, but then a little cube up here, because that's, uh, you know, kind of X, Y, Z, or meters cubed um, in three-dimensional space, and so there's three real axes. When you take more advanced classes, um, you know, as engineers or uh, physicists, I'm not sure if chemists do or not, um, but you'll start to work in imaginary axes, and then you can't use the symbol anymore.
Uh, okay, so when we um, when we do this system here, the 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 3D space kind of gets split into um, coordinate planes here. Uh, gets split into several kind of octants. Right? Remember back in the days of, of 2D mathematics, um, which was so long ago, last week, yesterday. Um, you know, we defined this is the first quadrant, this is the, I'm over on the left side here, the, the guy's hand is in the first quadrant, second quadrant, third quadrant, fourth quadrant. Well, now that we've split this up into 3D, we notice there's eight of them. Um, and, uh, you know, we still have the, the four quadrants, so they would be, on the, this light blue one here is the XY plane, because we can travel around just in X and Y. Z is always zero. So previously we've been living in the XY plane. Z is equal to zero. We're flat on the ground. Um, but the light light blue here to travel around, um, we could go up from each of these quadrants in the positive Z direction. We could go down in each of the quadrants um, in the negative Z direction to get eight octants. So we have eight octants. And the naming convention is a little bit incomplete. So... Um, if x, y, and z are all greater than zero, then uh, we call that the first octant. So where everything's positive, a nice little positive world is the first octant. And then they quit. <laughs> so two through seven, you know, we don't know. Uh, it depends, you know, it doesn't depend on anything. They're just not defined. So the only octant that's really defined um, is the first octant. Um, all right, so let's talk a little bit about distance in 3D space. Uh, now, in 2D space, remember if we drew, I'm going to draw some right-handed coordinates here. Let's see, I go this way. So traditionally, this would be X, and this would be Y, and to make it right-handed, okay, so I go this way, curl my fingers this way, that means that the z-coordinate has to come out in this direction. And so this is z. Um, and you can hear my son commenting on my lecture back there in the background. Um, he's got to learn about calculus sooner or later. Might as well start now. Uh, so, what are we talking about distance? So if I picked some point that's here in the xy plane, let's draw that in blue. Um, let's draw a point here. And I wanted to draw this distance. Right, I would just say this is um, d equals the square root of um, x minus x1 squared um, plus y1, uh, well, I could call it 2, y2 minus y1 squared, right? Um, but if I wanted to get tricky here and go into three dimensions, and I'm going to take this point and kind of move off into the third z direction somewhere. And so now this point here, I'm going to draw it get out of there. I figured out why that happens, by the way, but I still don't know exactly how to avoid it. So this point is now has three coordinates. This one is just some point x, y. This point has the same x and y, but it now has a z coordinate as well, x, y, z. And so the distance to get to this one, d equals, as you might expect, and some of you may have actually done this already, um, x minus x squared plus uh, y minus y squared plus z minus z squared. Um, now this is, seems like a simple extension of the Pythagorean theorem, but you may want to take, I'll make these, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1. Um, it, it, it's not entirely obvious how this works, and I think the book does a pretty good job explaining it. Um, it really involves a couple different triangles uh, in a couple different planes. Uh, 
Um, so that's uh, the the distance really becomes um, pretty straightforward. Okay, um, so from there let's go to uh, well let's do an example. Um, say I wanted to find uh, find all points that are um, let's say seven units from the point what am I going to say here, how about four five negative three All right. so let's maybe envision where four five negative three is, I'll draw that in orange so this point here so if I went four five uh, and then if I, that's 4, 5, and then I'd have to go in the negative direction, back this way to negative 3. So I'll say that's 4, 5, negative 3. And I wanted to find all the points that are 7 units away from that. How could I write that? Well, I'd say 7, the distance 7 equals, uh, and then I would say the square root of this whole thing. Um, I don't know my second point, I'm just trying to find the generic ones. So I'd say that's x minus 4 squared plus y minus 5 squared plus z minus minus. So that actually turns out to be a plus, doesn't it? Minus minus. 3 squared. So that's, um, so any point x, y, z that, that, ma that makes this work, it will be 7 units away from this point. Well, what shape does that make? If I wrote it like this, it might look a little more familiar. x minus 4 squared plus y minus 5 squared plus z plus 3 squared equals 49. Well, this looks like a circle. What does a circle become in three dimensions? A sphere. Right? These are all the points that are seven units from some point in 3D space would give me a sphere. So that's our first shape that we've really learned about in 3D space. And for the sake of today, uh, we're just going to do one more. Um, what if we, you know, we look at this and it's like, okay, that's obviously a sphere. It looks like a circle and just add one more dimension. Fine, I believe that's a sphere. But what if it gave you something like this? Um, another example here. What if I said uh, x plus 3y minus 5z equals 15? Right. Well, we're, we're used to seeing things like x plus 3y equals 15. Let's do a sidebar for that. Sidebar over here. So x plus 3y equals 15. You know, what does that give me? That gives me a line. So what kind of what's the 3D analog of a line when the exponents on all three variables is just one? Well, that'll be a plane. So let's see if we can figure out what this thing looks like. Uh, I'll draw a nice big coordinate system here. My z is going to be negative, so I'll draw it uh, like this. There's that. There's that. So we have x, y, and then z comes out this way, right? Um, well, what if I set, <clears throat> for instance, y and z both equal to zero? If y and z are both equal to zero, where am I? So I can't go up and down at all. I can't come in and out at all. So that means I'm stuck. Where am I? So yeah, y and z are both zero. So I'm stuck somewhere on the x-axis. I can only go in and out this way. I have to be along this line because I can't come forward or back. 
for instance, I could come up this, but I can't go this way. I can't go this way, so I'm stuck on the axis. So it really makes something of an intercept. So if y and z are both zero, this is going to be way out here at 15. So let's say uh, do that in a different color. So this would be 15 comma 0 comma 0. Y and Z are both 0. And I'm, I'm stuck there. Well, the same way we could say, well, what if um, X and Z are both 0? If X and Z are both 0, then, so this, let me, I'm going to make a comment here. This is Y and Z are both 0. Y equals Z equals 0. And the same deal if x and z are both equal to 0, then it's 3y equals 15. So what does y equal to? y is equal to 5. So I can go up to here. So x <coughs> equals z equals 0. Then I can say that 3y equals 15 y equals 5, so this point is, um, what did I say, 0, 5, 0. That's that point there. Well, let's do the last one. What if x and y are both 0? Then negative 5z equals 15, which means z equals negative 3. z equals negative 3. So now I've got to go backwards. I've got to go in the negative z direction. And the way we draw that is just kind of, I, I like to draw a dotted line back here, put an arrow there and say this is the negative z direction. Um, so then that would be uh, z equals negative 3. Do that in green again. So that would be right about here. And so this is... 0, 0, negative 3. Right, so if I have to come up with, you know, in the old days we just draw a straight line between these two points here, and that would be a straight line. But if I um, want to do it in three dimensions, well, what do you think this would be? It would be a flat plane. This would be a plane that just goes through all three of these points and it's kind of tipped. So if I dropped a ball here, it would kind of roll back into the x and negative z plane. So this is the equation of a plane, and this is kind of a good idea how to plot that, but to sketch that would be uh, well beyond my drawing uh, abilities. So there you go. Now, the homework for this particular chapter is pretty straightforward. Well, it mathematically it's not very hard, but it's very challenging in terms of kind of thinking where would this be, what would this be, what shape would this make, where would this plane wind up, that kind of stuff. So what I thought was a good um, example to kind of help you think in the right way um, is this one here, this thing that I called the offset planes. And I ripped this off right out of the book. Let's, ah, shoot, I didn't mean to do that. Well, yeah, let me get rid of that. Um, clear this page. I'm going to insert it again so we can make it a little bigger. Offset planes. Okay, make this bigger. Yeah, so now we can talk about this a little bit better. Um, so here's our origin. Uh, where am I? Yeah, so here's my origin down here, zero, zero, zero. And this green plane, um, it looks to be right at the plane. Well, it kind of comes out here. So the green plane appears to be x equals 2, right? So it's kind of offset from the axis. So here's where this point Two zero zero goes through this plane, and we can define this entire plane by just saying x equals two. I can go up and down as far as I want. I can go left and right because in this case, left and right is the y direction. I can go this way as much as I want. I can go up and down as much as I want, but I'm stuck at an x dimension of two. So this makes a plane. Well, what about this salmon-colored one here? This pinkish, yeah, salmon. We'll call it salmon. Um, this seems to be at 0, 3, 0. That's where the y-axis pierces this plane. Can we picture that? Hopefully you can. Then the plane is just labeled y equals 3. So that goes out here. 
Um, I can move any way I want to in the x direction. I can move any way I want to in the um, z direction. But I can't move in the y direction, so I'm stuck kind of on this surface, on this plane. So we call that the plane y equals 3. What happens where these two intersect? Well, if I'm stuck, I can't move my x because I, I have to stay on this green plane here, the x equals 2 plane. If I can't move my y, I'm stuck at y equals 3. That really only leaves me one dimension in which I can travel, and that is just up and down in the z direction. Um, there's a, uh, a little movie or documentary called Flatlanders that I think Carl Sagan uh, plays a role in, actually, where he talks about being stuck in dimensions. You can move in one dimension, you can move in two dimensions, you can move in three dimensions. What if you can move in four dimensions? Um, so it's pretty neat. Uh, but anyway, we'll go over this homework. It, it, it's uh, not mathematically hard. It's uh, spatially a little bit challenging. But I'm pretty sure you guys can all handle it. I look forward to seeing you on uh, Monday.